Yes, everybody, Russell and the West End Network. Hope you are all safe and well. Hammers headlines in association with the KUMB.com, boys. Anyone who uses the channel, every sort of afternoon we give you headlines, a roundup of some of the latest news that's happened in the last 24 hours to do with West Ham. Obviously, this morning I spoke about the power struggle, power shift maybe in West Ham with Tim Steiden. Flex, not Tim Steiden, with, um, what's the other one? Danny Kaczynski, flexing his muscles in the boardroom. Uh, we did uh, Russie's Rumour Roundup at lunchtime, talking about a few um, rumours, um, new players we've been linked to, the likes of, um, not new players, but Solanke updates and, and Nezri and uh, Laser Samaradic. And also we went through sort of our list so far. It's about 30 players we've been linked to. So over a Premier League squad already we've been linked with. And it's only the 16th of May. But anyway, we're going to talk about today players who might not be with us come the start of the season. So we so players coming in at lunchtime. This one's going to be players going out and a few sort of it's bits of information um, about uh, things like who's going to be the captain next year and how much money have we got to spend next year, that type of thing, or this year rather. So let's start with the outs. It might help if I actually press the right button. There we go. Um, so... We know there's going to be a change uh, of the guard in terms of types of players coming in and the types of players leaving. Now, obviously, not everyone can leave, um, but there does seem to be a lot of players potentially on the horizon or walking out into the horizon, rather. Um, and a lot of this came from The Athletic. The Athletic really smashed out of the park the last couple of days. So some really good articles and really good story pieces. First one's about Mikel Antonio. And as you can see, um, according to the Athletic, he is a target for several MLS and Saudi Arabia clubs this summer. Uh, they spoke yesterday on their website reporting that the Jamaican international was a target for Galatasaray as well and El Etihad. Uh, no, El Etihad. Yeah, uh, last summer. But he opted to stay at London Stadium and signed a new deal. But the MLS clubs and Saudi interests returned this ahead of this summer. It's unclear on his stance or where J Lo sees him fit in the squad. And obviously, he did. I mean, J Lo, when he was at Wolves, had previous interest in him, and there was a potential of him going to Wolves. So it's impossible for everyone to leave, as we know. Um, and so, Steinden, Loopy, they need to work together and, you know, have to see who he's particular about and who he wants to keep in the squad and who they can move on, who they could bring in to replace them as well. We spoke about Simon Banzi yesterday, very good player, almost as an Antonio 2.0, to be honest. <laughs> and I think it's a case now, and I said it, was it Tuesday, Monday? Monday? I think it might be Monday, of where Antonio sees his immediate future in terms of playing um, obviously, he's had quite a few starts since he returned from his injury and has performed well. But next year, by all accounts, we're going out to get a, you know, a number nine. Um, and whether he, whether Antonio will be happy with a impact sub role. Because that's really how he should be utilised now within West Ham. He might go to a another club. He might go to a, a, a foreign-based club and be able to play a lot more games. The intensity of the football might be less. But I think it'd be interesting to see where he goes. I mean, he won't be first-choice striker next year. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. So, personally, I'd want to keep him because I think as an impact sub, there's no one else like him in the Premier League, really. Him and... Um, to have a Triore are really the only types of players who could come on and just physically dominate anyone. Um, and he can. And when he's got it, when he's when he's in beast mode, when he's got the bit between the teeth, there's no one better, really, in terms of what in terms of his physical attributes. But it's all in two, it's, it's two and far between. Um, and you know, thirty four now. We've got an old squad. We're trying to youth it up. Um, 
if there's a a, a decent res- not response, if there's, if there's a decent replacement for him, I would see that being a, a, a progression in terms of our squad. But we'll see. Another player we are apparently um, deciding at the moment on the future of is, is uh, goalkeeper Joseph Nang. I don't call him young because he's he's at an age now where he's he's not a young. You know, he's he's too old really for the twenty ones now. But according to uh, the Athletics, Rashane Thomas, friend of the channel, the England youth international stopper has been third choice for the Hammers this season and may be told to find a new club under the new J Lo regime. Um, and Nang was someone who very much has helped Caduce. Um, integrate himself into the West Ham squad. Him and uh, Caduce are both born in Ghana and both speak uh, the same dialect as well. And he has been, I mean, Joseph has been on lots of, lots of loan spells. Stevenage, St. Patrick's Athletic, Derby County. And he is held in higher stead by, and high esteem by senior figures at the club, having helped Caduce settle in at London. But the article states that um, his long-term future will be will be decided in the coming weeks. His deal is is set to expire. Um, himself and Nathan Trot are both coming to the end of their agreements. It was assumed that Nathan Trot will be offered a new deal in order for him to be sold. So the club have some money in the bank for him um, and won't lose out too much. Um, but for Joseph, I think the time's potentially time to move on. He's 23 now. He needs first team regular senior football to kick stage, kick off his next stage. Of course, he's got seven, eight years ahead of him at least. A goalkeeper, 10 years, you know. So um, so it seems that it's very much in the balance. Um, I mean, West Ham could offer him another deal on similar terms to what he's on now to keep their Goalkeeper options bulked up and allow the likes of maybe Christian Heggie, Jacob Knightbridge maybe to go out on loan to gain more first-team football experience. I don't know. I mean, he's too old now for the 21s. And he's had this sort of conveyor belt of loan deals. Um, So that doesn't help anyone's development, really. Um, I mean, he's eligible for the national, the Ghanaian national side. So that could come down, you know, it could be something he could look to maybe break into uh, if he got regular football with a new employer, for example. He's not going to get that at West Ham. So it's a big summer for him. He's six foot three. He's a big lad. Um, and he's a nice guy as well. So hopefully for his sake, um, his future is decided sooner rather than later and he can progress with the next stage of his career. Now, uh, another player. It was, it has been on loan. Very, it's actually still out on loan. They, they play their second leg of the playoffs. It's nil nil against West Brom after the first leg on Friday. I think it is. It's Flynn Downs. Um, now, according to the Athletic, again, Southampton want to turn to Flynn um, and want to turn his loan deal into a permanent one after their very successful season. Uh, on their website yesterday, uh, the news outlet reported that the Saints are keen to bring him back to St Mary's for the twenty four twenty five season. And the player is open to the move. He's said, I think it was a Daily Echo day interview, he said he loves the club. He would you know, love to stay if they want him. He doesn't know what's going on at West Ham at the moment. Um, now, apparently, Lopetegui has said he is keen to give the West Ham player and West Ham fan a chance at the London Stadium. And talks will be likely be held in the summer about his immediate future at the club. Obviously, he joined West Ham when Moyes was in dire need of any sort of midfielders and um, maybe we were somewhat rushed into a deal to bring him in um, from Swansea. Struggled to get the step up. Didn't really get a chance. Struggled to get regular football. So when the club then brought in more midfielders last summer, it was clear that Flynn's chances were diminished considerably with the likes of Edson Alvarez and JWP. We'll talk about JWP in a minute. Um, and that's how fancy he's become a real key figure this season um, under Russell Martin um, and is arguably one of the best players in the championship this year. Um, it's no surprise he would go back there in a heartbeat because 
is guaranteed first team football and guaranteed to play a bigger role than maybe he would have at London Stadium. But who knows in terms of what is J Lo's plans for him? I suppose there'll be a discussion there, and there'll be. Just don't forget we'll have Freddie Potts back as well. He's had a fantastic season at Wickham, a few years younger than Flynn. But Flynn's only a young lad. He's only like a week younger than Declan Rice. So we shall see about that as well. To my JWP, an interesting report in, you've guessed it, The Athletic, um, has suggested that JWP could be in line to become the next captain of West Ham under the JLO regime. The report yesterday stated that the England international is among a list of candidates to succeed Kurt Zuma if he leaves London Stadium or if Lopetegui decides to head in a different direction with his captaincy. It's something which we've been talking about a lot in terms of captaincy. Uh, Anton said about it. And it was Anton or Holly. Might be both. I spoke about it separately, about what they wanted to see with the new regime. And one was a new direction with the captaincy. And I, I totally agree. I mean, the, in terms of J-Lo, in terms of J-Lo P, rather, the 29-year-old has enjoyed a you know, relatively positive debut, I think, this season this year. 50 appearances, 18 goal contributions. Um, he's yet to be called up and added to his 11 England caps. Um, and isn't going to make the cup for the squad for the 2024 Euros. But a captain's armband could potentially force him back into the England setup. You know, it's a more prominent position. It's by being captain, you're going to be starting. Well, they did start quite a few games already, but you'll be starting more responsibility, more profile as well. And I think, in all honesty, I, I think. Moyes earmarked JWP as a new ca- as the new captain last year when we signed him. He was off. He offered Harry Maguire the captaincy, didn't he, uh, as part of a sweetener for him to try and come in. And I and then I think maybe he decided against that and thought Zuma because he was more established at West Ham would be a better captain. I don't think he is. I don't think he is. To be perfectly honest, um, I mean it's something we'll have to see. I mean you know he's. We know JWP acts like a captain on the pitch already. Uh, many years of service at Southampton as their captain. Um, and spent the last three years, I think, his time at St Mary's club captain. Other people, names in the hat, you think the likes of Edson Alvarez. Um, I think he'd be a good captain. If he could curb so he doesn't lose, miss half dozen games through suspension. That's the only issue. Um, but JWP, very level-headed guy. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I said, there's, there's so much up in the air. It's really exciting this year, this summer. I'm really excited, you know, in terms of just the whole makeup of the team and the club as well, because the whole Steinden and J Lo dynamic is something we haven't had since Gianluca Nani and Zola. We were ahead of our time in the 2010, no, two, yes, 2010, wasn't it? 2009, something like that. Well ahead of our time, director of football and the head coach. Now it's come back full circle. Hopefully it's going to be less Savios, less Savios and more Solankis. I'm quite, I just I don't know where they come from. Um, and lastly, let's talk about money. Let's talk about money. Money, money, money. Would it be a case of, here comes the money for Tim Steinden? This summer transfer window. Well, according to an article in Clara and Hugh, the um, incumbent head coach and current director of football um, know that they've got a complete job uh, in terms of a complete overhaul of the squad. And apparently a war chest of £30 million from West Ham's European adventure with a further £30 million um, from, uh, from the board from pre uh, money money from previous transfers and then should Lucas Paqueta depart it's likely the club will hold on for around 85 million pounds so therefore around apparently 150 million could be available to spend not including monies from additional player sales um, so that 150 million pounds apparently is what we'll have available to spend um i think I think Tim could could do some do some stuff. There's lots of others. There's lots of other money has been added to the pot. Whether it gets added to the transfer budget is another thing. Um, we've 
earn, I think, £37 million for a final position in the Premier League, um, plus the TV money. I think we had 12, 12 games, wasn't it? 16 games, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to end up, we're expected to have a record turnover in the books next year. Um, reportedly three, about 370 million pound turnover, which will be a, a record. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how it all pans out. We also have the fourth lowest wages to turnover ratio. Another very key factor, particularly if we're going to be trying to out buy, out sell players who, particularly because we haven't got European football next year. So having the ability to offer more wages than a, Newcastle, if they get into the, you know, or, or Chelsea, is going to be critical. Um, I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's fascinating now what happened is going to happen with the FA Cup because obviously the FA Cup determines the the, the last, the second Europe Europa League place. And if Man City, Man United win it, then Newcastle miss out on Europe in seventh place. Um, if Man City win it, then Newcastle gets uh, Conference League. Chelsea get the Europa League at the moment, as it stands. Chelsea are in the Conference League next year, which I read a report uh, the other day, which actually suggested that Chelsea may decide they don't want to be in Europe in the Europa Conference League because the amount of money it costs and the amount of lack of revenue they get from the Conference League. Although it will be a slightly different format this year going forward, it's the it's the, it's the league format rather than the group format, isn't it? Um, anyway. That's it. That's your Hammers headlines uh, in association with the KUMB.com boys. Don't forget to give them a like. Don't forget to go over there. Check out all the latest news, reviews, opinions, fan debate, ITK news. It's all there, mate. It's all there in one place. Until next time, take care. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay humble, my friends. Come